でもはい。Thank you. Can you say hi to the camera? Yep, say. Hi everyone, welcome to Popsicle Frog Knits. My name is Brooke. I am the human behind Popsicle Frog, and this is a knitting podcast. So this is my first knitting podcast. I'm very excited. Um, episode one, and since it's my first one, I figured I should probably start by introducing myself. <laughs> um, so again, my name is Brooke. Um, I am 23 and I'm based in Houston, well, outside of Houston in Texas, so it's very warm all of the time. Not that you can tell by the things that I've been knitting that it's the middle of summer, um, but I digress. Um, so I started knitting in December of 2021, so about seven months ago, it was right before Christmas, um, and it... I started knitting um, partially to figure out a way to keep my hands occupied um, instead of fidgeting. But I started in December and I have not stopped since. And when I say that, I mean literally. Um, I think there's only been like one or two days where I have not been knitting. Um, so yeah. Um, the reason I decided to start this podcast is there's really three reasons. Um, the first is that while I'm knitting, I love watching knitting podcasts and knitting videos on YouTube. Um, it's very relaxing for me and it's also really nice to like feel like I'm knitting with someone um, because I don't know any knitters in real life. Well, my mom's best friend knits, but other than that, um, I don't really know anyone that knits. Um, yeah, so that was the first reason. The second is I, in college, I was a um, film and theater double major with a focus on production in both of those things. Um, so I love making videos. I love creating things and I haven't been doing that and I really miss it. So I figured this will be a great way to work on my filming and work on my editing. Um, which are things that I really enjoy. And three, um, I live with my parents and I'm pretty sure they're tired of me talking about knitting all the time. So I figured if I have a different outlet to talk about my knitting and don't feel like I need to tell them everything, not that they mind me talking about knitting, they don't, but I feel bad. So, um, yeah, so I am going to go ahead and get started. This is going to follow a pretty formulaic knitting podcast structure. Um, I'm going to start with what I'm wearing and go into finished objects, works in progress, and um, acquisitions, which I have quite a few of, which is not normal for me. I tend not to buy yarn um, without a specific purpose. Um, the yarn I do have has a specific purpose, but We'll get there later. Um, so first I'm going to start with what I'm wearing. So this is the Pure Mesh Pullover by James N. Watts. Um, this so fun to knit. So much fun. It took me a couple of days and I enjoyed the entire project. Um, even the seaming. Like I don't like seaming but this was fun. <laughs> um, and so I made this a in June, I think. Um, and the yarn that I used is by an indie dyer, um, who I believe is based in San Antonio, um, called Euphoria Knits. Um, I met her at a trunk show at my local yarn store a couple, like, month and a half, two months ago. Um, and she had some of the most beautiful <laughs> hand dyed yarn. And it was so hard not to buy more, but I was like, okay, I'm going to buy one, one hank, one, only one. And I am going to use it to, I bought, I wanted to, to buy a hank specifically to make this project. Um, so this is 
let's see if I can it is a beautiful like silvery gray that is ooh, let's see has quite a bit of dimension to it um, so this is um, a fingering weight yarn it's um, again it's by euphoria knits it's on her frenzy base which is an 85% merino 15% nylon base this color is called sterling like sterling silver um, and I absolutely love it um, it makes me very happy and it's really nice to wear when it's 100 degrees outside um, I mean I don't I probably shouldn't be wearing knitwear but who cares not me, obviously. Um, so with this one, I knitted a size small um, because I looked at the differences between the small and the medium and really the difference was the length. So like the, I believe the circumference of the garment was the same. It was really just like how long. So I decided to do a small, um, even though my measurements fit a medium I have like between an fluctuating between like a 90 centimeter and 95 centimeter bust which is like 30 35 to 37 inches I think um, so I could have made a medium but here I can show you it when it stretches I can pull it down and tuck it in I'm not wearing a belt so it won't stay tucked in um, so for I did have issues with the cast on is the one thing I I started it I casted with I did a normal long tail cast on trying to do it very loosely and I started working and I was like this is not stretchy enough not in the slightest so I decided to do an or old Norwegian cast on which is stretchier and uh, that seemed like it was gonna be fine um, it's very tight <laughs> so I blocked it I stretched it out literally as far as I could without breaking it and it does not have any let's see if this will show it does not have any give so yes it fits around my body I can get it over my head but it is so tight <laughs> it's the only place that it's tight nowhere else is it tight it's just the cast on so um I am planning on making another one um I'll talk about that a little bit later so I am planning on making another one so that one I think I'm going to either cast on a larger needle size cast on over my over both needles and do an old Norwegian cast on to hopefully help with that um, but the pattern is brilliant <laughs> literally it's so much fun to knit like once you get the pattern it's just like, okay, I know how to do this. And you kind of can just go, 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 especially because it's not that many stitches. Um, so it goes super quickly. Um, it's knit flat, seamed up, so it has a seam all the way down the body. Um, if you don't like seaming, uh, there's a lot of it. But I thought it was very fun to do. So that is what I am wearing today. Um, it's really one of the few knitwear pieces I can wear <laughs> um, right now in this heat. So um, now I'm gonna move on to my finished objects for July. Um, first I'm gonna have a little bit of water, which All right, so the first object I am gonna start with is actually two objects because it is a pair of socks, woo. Um, give you a little bit of a closer look. These are still on my sock blockers. They are dry, I just haven't taken them off. Um, but yeah, these are just a vanilla pair of socks um, I did not follow pattern, um, cause I had just, I haven't right here, these are not a finished object of now, but these are the very special socks by Stone Knits. Um, so I had 
follow the pattern for this pair of socks and I had followed a sock pattern bef before um, it was I believe the camp socks by Ozetta I know it was by Ozetta I think it was the camp socks she has a lot of sock patterns but um, this is gonna be my third pair of socks and so I couldn't find a pattern I liked and so I just decided to cast on a sock and see what happened. So I originally cast on, I believe it was 72 stitches. Um, my goodness, they were huge. And this was on 2.25 um, millimeter circular needles. And it was huge, gigantic um, for me. Um, I thought 72 would work because uh, the Berry Special socks I did were on 2.75 millimeters and it was a 72 stitch. So I was like, oh, it'll, uh, it'll definitely fit on 2.25. Um, I was incorrect. So because I did a significant chunk of the first sock um, and I had not previously gauge swatched because I don't see the point of gauge swatching for socks. Um, I do gauge for almost everything else though. But I found my gauge from the sock I had knit and then I was like, okay, how was the circumference I want for this sock? And so from there, I just figured out how many stitches. So this is a 60 stitch sock. Um, it, it, let's see, let's focus on the sock. It's two by two rib around the top. I believe I did about 15 rows. Um, and then I just worked the leg. I did a German short row heel. That was the only part I had not done before. I'd never done a German short row heel. The very special socks do like a faux German short row heel, which I think is potentially called a fish lips heel, I think. Um, hadn't done that before, so I used the How to Do a German Short Row Heel video by Norman of Nimble Needles, which I highly recommend. Great video. Um, super helpful. Walks you through step by step. And I just knit these. Um, I knit them fairly quickly, too, because I wanted to have an all stockinette in the round project going and so when I got to the heel of the first one I was like I don't want to do the heel yet so I cast on the other one so I finished them quite quickly I have not actually worn them because they're still on the blockers and it's very hot um, here in Houston but that's my first finished object for July alrighty let's put those away all right so on to my next item so this is ta-da these are the Hemingway shorts yay um first off I'm obsessed with them this is a test knit um for Lara, who is also known on Instagram as the Knitting Booth. Um, this pattern has not, as of filming, it has not been released. Um, the deadline for feedback is in, I think, two days. So I need to go ahead and do that. Um, but these are the shorts. I, again, I'm obsessed with them. I have worn them once. I wore them over the weekend um, to like sit by the pool at our at my friend's house, and it was lovely. Just her, my puppy. She's not really a puppy. She's three and a half, but she'll she'll always be a puppy. Um, so these are the Hemingway shorts, which are called the Hemingway shorts because they have five double folded hems so you have the hem with the elastic at the top then you have two little pocket band double folded hems and then each of the legs has a 
double folded him as well. Um, so yeah, I, for si sizing wise, I made size E, which is the fifth size. There are 14 sizes. It goes from an, um, the measurement you take to figure out your size is um, like at the lowest part of your butt. So like the, where it would be the widest. Um, and so size E is for 100 centimeters to 105 centimeters. So the sizes are in five centimeter, five centimeter increments and there are 14 sizes. So it goes from 80, yeah, 80 centimeters to 150 centimeters. That's the two ends. Um, again, it's five centimeter, five centimeter increments. My toilet decided it wanted to make some noise. Hopefully you don't hear that. Um, so the waist size for size E, which is the fifth size, is uh, 76 centimeters. Um, so those are them. Um, all right, so the yarn that I used is uh, the yarn the pattern calls for, which is Drops, Drops Bell in colorway, color 10, which is like moss green, I believe. Um, this yarn is 53% cotton, 33% viscose, and 14% linen. So it's a really nice blend. Um, it's drops, so it's insanely affordable. I got this on sale. I believe it was like two US dollars a ball, and I used about five and a half balls for my size. Um, each each little guy is uh, 50 grams. So I think I used between 250 and 300 grams. Um, I still need to do final weighing of what I have left of the last skate, last little ball that I used. Um, I really liked working with this yarn. Um, I didn't find it to be like super drying um, I'm like, I'm feeling it now. I, it was really fun to work with. I really like how it has like a depth of color because you can see the different fibers and they're all holding the color slightly differently. Um, which I think is pretty cool. The one thing is it is so splitty. It splits all over the place. So, uh, keep that in mind if you're planning on using it. It is DK, which is what the pattern calls for. Um, and yeah, I'm super excited about, this is my first test knit, so it's awesome. Um, this is also Lara's first design. So everyone go check her out on Instagram. She makes really cool stuff. Um, yeah, so that was my second finished object for July and I got one more that I finished yesterday and it has not been blocked. Um, oh, one other thing about the Hemingway shorts is I blocked them. I didn't aggressively block them. So I just soaked them, um, let them dry on my blocking mats. Um, and I think because of the yarn, um, you can kind of see creases. Those were partially from blocking and partially from wearing them the other day. Um, the other thing is even after blocking, the drape didn't really change until I'd been wearing them for a couple of hours. So I, they were a little bit tight on my thighs. Um, but after wearing them, it loosened up and I really love how they fit. The hardest part is the pocket bands, which I forgot to mention, um, mine are fake. <laughs> I feel like I always complain about not having pockets, but then when it came to putting pockets in these shorts, which I, I had the stitches on hold and everything. I even knit the pockets, but I tried them on and for me, it just added too much bulk. 
for how I wanted them to fit, but I'm obsessed with how the pocket bands look. And so I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna knit the pocket bands. And so I knit the pocket bands the way it's described in the pattern. And then um, before I bound off, I, um, I Kitchener stitched. Let's see if I can show you. I Kitchener stitched the pocket band to the stitches I had on hold. So, um, that's what the inside looks like. Let's see if it'll focus. Um, so, yeah. And my pockets, my mattress seam is not great. So let's not look at that too much, but so fun to knit. It took, the shorts themselves only took a couple of days. The pockets, pocket bands, I kind of, were less fun to knit. So um, that took me a little bit longer, um, especially because I was having to do magic loop for the pockets and I am not a fan of magic loop. Um, but I didn't have tiny circulars that were the right size. So it's fine. Um, I ended up ripping the pockets out anyway. So um, that's all for these. I also realized with the socks, I did not talk about the yarn. I, so um, I feel like this is a, I've seen quite a, a lot of people use this yarn. This is um, Drops Fable or it's spelled Fabel, but I think in English it's Fable. So that's what I'm gonna call it. Um, Drops Fable in, this is one of the like pattern colorways. It's, um, let's see, I have it written down. Yes, 904 Lavender. Um, I'm really happy with how it turned out. I think the, it was super fun to work with the self striping patterning yarn um, instead of like doing a solid color. And um, I used, because I worked on both socks at once, I had each of them attached to their own um, 50 gram ball of yarn because I had no idea how much I was gonna use. Each of these weighs about 26 grams. So if I made them a little bit smaller, I could have gotten away with just one ball of yarn because I have, I am almost 5'8", but I have US size seven feet. So in proportion, I have super tiny feet to how tall I am. Um, but again, I digress. They are not, they do not, they are sisters, they are not twins. Um, almost none of the coloring is the same in the same spots, but I don't really care because I like mismatched socks. Um, so it does not bother me that the pattern name is not even close to being the same. Um, that was the first self patterning yarn that I've used and I have some more coming in the mail to make my mom a pair of socks and I'm quite excited about it. Um, and the Drops Fable is 75% wool, 25% um, nylon. So now let's get on to the last finished object, which I'm very excited about. Um, and that is Cumulus tea! Yay! Um, it has not been blocked. So the I-cord's still kind of rolling um, because I literally finished the bottom I-cord yesterday. Um, I did the sleeves before I did the body. So I did the, so let me start over. So this is a Cumulus tea. It's by Petite Knit. This was the no, it's not the first patine knit pattern I've done. It's the first patine knit pattern that I finished, which I think is something. Um, you'll see I have quite a theme going of patine knit patterns um, entirely unintentionally. Um, up until May, I had not knit a patine knit pattern. Um, and then I kind of jumped headfirst into a bunch of them. So this one is the Cumulus Tea which I have now said like three times. Um, I'm very happy with how it turned out. Um, 
I promise all of my ends are woven in. A couple, like two months ago, I watched one of Andrea Mowry's I'll Knit If I Want To podcasts and she said, she recommended not cutting your ends until after you've blocked because after you've blocked, you can see if you actually like the garment and if you don't, you can just unweave your ends and unravel it and reuse the yarn. And I was like, that is such a good idea. So now I don't cut my ends until after I have blocked my garments. So as soon as I finish recording this, I'm going to block this so I can start wearing it. Um, but let's talk a little bit about it. So first off, this is a size medium. Um, it looks much smaller than a medium because I used 2.75 millimeter needles, which um, the pattern calls for three millimeter, which I do not have and um, I have not found <laughs> in Houston. Uh, I need to order some, <laughs> but it's not a common size in the US apparently. Um, the interchangeable needles that I use do not have a three millimeter option. They stop at 3.5. Um, I believe, I think that's US 4, which is the smallest size that I have. Um, so I knit a medium on slightly smaller needles. I did a gauge swatch and my gauge seemed like it was going to be fine. Um, so I, I gauge swatch, but I, I, I'm not always accurate, but I just kind of go for it and hope it works out okay. Um, but... This was super fun to knit, even though it's on tiny needles. I actually love tiny needles. Um, so 2.75, I did a couple modifications other than changing the needle size. So the first is um, in the pattern for the bind off, which is an I cord. I cord. Um, you're supposed to decrease at the same time that you're doing the I cord to like cinch it in. So I did that on one arm and I tried it on and it felt like a blood pressure cuff. Um, so I was like, you know what, I'm going to see what it looks like if, excuse me, if I don't do the cinching in, um, on the second sleeve and if it still gets kind of the desired effect because I went down a needle size, um, and it did, it still kind of has the like little poofed scrunched bit without strangling me, um, which is good. So then I ripped out the first I-cord edge and redid it uh, without the decreases. And then I did the neck I-cord, um, which is just norm done, pick up all the stitches and do it. Um, I think somehow I ended up with, <laughs> with more stitches than I was supposed to have, but um, I don't, it doesn't bother me. Um, then I just worked until it got to the length that I wanted. I didn't, I didn't do it as long as the pattern calls for because I like things a little bit more cropped. Um, but then I did the same thing I did for the arms where I did not do the decreases um, that the pattern calls for because normally I wear things Okay, my camera cut me off because I hit 30 minutes. Um, so let's get back to where I was. I was talking about the bottom I cord. Um, so I normally tuck things in um, and I wear super high waisted pants, which you can kind of see <laughs> they sit so high. Um, and so I did not want it to be super poofy um, and I also did not want it strangling my stomach because I have a stomach condition and things that are super restrictive on my stomach are not good. So I did that. Um, yeah, that's kind of all the modifications I did. And then the yarn that I used, which I'm in love with, I don't know if you noticed a theme. I, I like green quite a bit. Um, which you'll see a little bit later too. Um, but this is by Less Traveled Yarn. Um, I 
randomly on Instagram saw that they were hosting a trivia night for their fifth anniversary. And I was like, you know what? I'm not doing anything that night. Um, I'm going to go and try to win some yarn from trivia. I did not win, but I did get a discount code to use. And so I was like, I have to use this. Um, so I bought two skeins of their Paloma fingering, um, which is like their, one of their luxury fingering yarns because it is 90% superwash, super fine merino, and 10% silk. Um, I had not worked with like a merino silk blend before, so I was very excited to try it, and I really loved working with it. I think there were points where it split a little bit more than I'm used to a merino splitting. I don't know if that was the silk or if that was just the needles I was using, um, but this is what I have left. Not much at all. I was really cutting it close because the medium calls for, it's just 200 to 250 grams. And I was like, I'm gonna just buy 200 because I normally crop things. So I should be good. And I was, I got a whole shirt out of two skeins, um, which is always nice, especially because it was on sale. Um, and go check out their yarn. They have some beautiful colorways. Very cool. Um, the trivia night was super fun. Um, yeah, so that is, um, I'll probably in the next podcast show what it looks like blocked just because I feel like it's gonna look so much better blocked. Um, but those are all my finished objects for July. Um, so now I'm going to quickly go through my works in progress or my whips. Um, I'm going to start with my current one, which I have in this lovely little basket. Um, this is from Nigeria. I lived there for four years when I was younger um, with my family. So we got this there and my mom found it the other day and was like, isn't it so cute? And I was like, yeah, it is. She's like, you should use it for your knitting. And I was like, okay. So this is my little knitting basket. <laughs> um, I'm going to set it down, but this is my Ingrid sweater. Woo. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about this because I am actually working on a like knitting vlog of making this but I started it the other day it's going by so fast I'm absolutely obsessed with it it's so pretty it's gonna block out very nicely um and yeah I I did like a check-in for the <laughs> for the for the knitting vlog yesterday and I was like okay I've just finished the eyelets I'm about to start on the um next mock cable section and I started the mock cable section and I got to the end of the first row and my stitch count was off. And I was like, oh no, where did I mess up? Turns out I messed up on the eyelet row. So I had to go back like six rows, but it's okay. I'm, I'm fine with it. It doesn't bother me. I don't know why it doesn't bother me. I think cause it's just so fun to knit. I don't really mind redoing it, um, but I'm knitting the size medium. Uh, I'm using four millimeter needles, which is what the pattern calls for. And yeah, I'm super excited. I started on Friday, so it's been going pretty quickly. Um, the yarn I'm using, I guess I'll talk about it now and then not during the acquisition section, but it is Barocco ultra alpaca um it is colorway 6214 which is called steel cut oats um it is 50 percent super fine alpaca and 50 percent peruvian wool um it's 200 meters and 100 grams so i bought six skeins six 
and I'm really hoping that's gonna be enough. I did see um, someone else on Ravelry use the same yarn and knit a medium, and it said that that person used six skeins, so hopefully I'll use the same amount as them. Um, Cause that was all my local yarn store had. So if I run out, I'm gonna have to try to find more, hopefully in the same dye lot. Um, so that's where I am with this one. Um, now, right now, my two other whips are kind of in hibernation. Um, I was trying, so this next whip, it's actually been in the background the entire time. I don't know if you've noticed. I was <laughs> trying, I was like, you have to finish the other sweater before you start the Ingrid sweater, you have to. And so I was like trying to power through, I was almost done with the first sleeve of the sweater that's behind me. And I was like, you know what? I'm not having fun doing this. I knit for fun. Why am I like making myself do something I don't wanna do right now? So I decided to put that sweater on hold and start the Ingrid sweater because I needed something different. Um, so let me grab this guy. Alrighty. So this is my fortune sweater. Again, I told you petite knit was going to be big in this episode. I don't expect that to continue, but <laughs> we shall see. Um, cause the Ingrid sweater is also by petite knit. I don't think I said that, but you probably know. If you don't, it's by Tatina. Um, fortune sweater. Awesome. I love it. I'm very excited to have it finished and have it in my wardrobe. I just am tired of working on it. This is my longest whip. I started it in May um, because I was watching the Night Sky Knitting Podcast, Rachel. Um, she made this in the most beautiful green color. I almost made it in the same green, but I was like, you know what? I already have a green sweater. Um, actually, I have two green sweaters. I was like, I don't need another green sweater at this moment. So I was like, you know what? I'll do purple. Um, so I really loved how hers looked. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to use the same yarn. So this is Drops Brushed Alpaca Silk, which is 77% alpaca and 23% silk. This is the like light lavender color, which I have a new ball right here. Let me look. It is color 17. Um, so they categorize this, I believe as an Aran weight yarn. Um, the pattern actually calls for two strands of mohair held together and it's supposed to be knit at a much looser gauge. So I'm using 3.5 millimeter needles, which is two sizes down. So it calls for four millimeter and it's supposed to be much more oversized and much looser, but that's not the style that I wanted. I really loved Rachel's and how the gauge was, how it fit her. And so I was like, you know what? I swatched, I swatched with four, I swatched with 3.75 and I swatched with 3.5 and I was like, you know what? 3.5 is the way to go. Um, so I'm knitting these on 3.5 millimeter needles. Um, I also use bamboo needles. So part of my issue with knitting on this is that the sleeve is really too small to be on my um, smallest circulars, but I don't want to use magic loop. So I'm just kind of suffering through, but I'm having some wrist pain from like trying to move the stitches on the bamboo needles. Um, it has this beautiful like clover motif, which is why it's called the fortune sweater because it's like a four leaf clover and it has that all throughout. Um, it has a double folded one by one rib collar and it does have German short rows. So this is the first sweater that I have done using German short rows and I think that I'm never looking back. Um, they make it look so much nicer on 
and I really I can't wait to finish this but at the same time I just don't have the motivation at this juncture to finish it so um, I'm trying to think I can't remember if I said what size I was knitting I'm knitting a large because I did size down my needle so much um, that even though normally I would knit a medium I'm measurement wise on all petite knit patterns I've looked at I am a medium um, I fall right in the center of the like range for medium um, so I went up one size to a large and I think it fits pretty good I was worried about the yoke depth but I've tried it on a couple of times and it works for me so um, I did a tubular um, bind off on the body um, which like took forever but definitely worth it um, and I'll do that on the sleeves as well so I think that's all for this one right now and then my final whip which is also in hibernation because I give me one second because I cast this on because I wanted an entirely in the round stock net project because I was sick and I had no energy to do anything else and I was waiting for the yarn for this to arrive <laughs> um so and I had this yarn in my stash um because I had started making something with it and I did not like it um I think the pattern is beautiful but the yarn that I chose and my body it just didn't work with um but the pattern was super well written, gorgeous. I might try it again sometime, we'll see. But this is, this is the start of an Oslo beanie, which is again by Petite Knit. Um, and I, um, this is like gonna fold together to be the like brim band. I don't know what it's called, but it will fold together and then go up from there. Um, I got to the point where I needed to join, where I needed to knit these two hems together. <laughs> and I was like, I don't have the energy to do that because I was sick. And then the day after I started this, my yarn for the cumulus tea arrived. And I was like, okay, this one can go. It's uh, the middle of July in Houston this can go into hibernation. So, um, not working on this right now, but, um, this is yarn B hand dyed vivid, which is a hundred percent merino wool. Um, it's Hobby Lobby's brand of yarn, which I would like to make a disclaimer that I absolutely hate shopping at Hobby Lobby. Okay editing Brooke here. I just want to clarify something. When I say that I don't like shopping at Hobby Lobby, um, I'm more saying like I don't agree with where like their beliefs and where they put their money. Um, I'm not trying to like shame anyone that shops at Hobby Lobby. I know that it's a really affordable, relatively easy to access in the U.S. and they have a lot of great yarn. Um, so please don't think that I'm shaming anyone. If you like to shop there, please keep shopping there. That's just my personal feelings on it. Um, so yeah, let's get back to the video and me a week ago. And I am trying my best to not shop there. Um, I bought this many months ago when I was like still kind of newer to knitting and not We're gonna take a quick break because my dogs are going crazy. Oh, okay, I'm back now. So I was, disclaimer about Hobby Lobby. Um, I bought this when I was still relatively new to knitting and I 
was like trying to buy more budget friendly yarn and unfortunately Hobby Lobby has a really big selection of like affordable non-acrylic yarns um whereas like Michael's or Joann's has a bigger selection of acrylic and I just hate the way acrylic feel feels I know that it's super budget friendly and that a ton of people use it and that is perfectly fine um I'm not here to like judge or shame anyone um but I don't like acrylic it really messes with my hands and just like sensory things um so I am trying to not buy yarn at Hobby Lobby because I would much rather be supporting like these are hand, this is hand dyed so I'd much rather be supporting indie dyers or like commercial dyers that are not Hobby Lobby so that's one of my like goals going forward but I do have some of it in my stash and I am trying to use it so that's that's that on that it's my other puppy so that is my last finished object so now I'm gonna quickly do acquisitions if that's not your thing I uh, thank you for watching I I if you stayed till this point that's crazy um I feel like I've been mumbling and rambling for an eternity so thank you um and I hopefully I'll see you again but if you do like acquisitions then stick around I've got some good ones so I already shared the yarn for my Ingrid sweater bless you little one my puppy sneezed um but there was a little bit of a I guess I can call it a debacle. <laughs> it was my own doing. Um, oh, the puppy's here. Come here. Let's see. Come here. Come here. Oh, hi. Thank you. Say hi. Can you say, can you say hi to the camera? Yep. Say. This is Ripley. Um, she is a lab. Oh, she's three and a half. Um, and she's the sweetest little girl. <laughs> she's stretching on me. Um, okay, can I finish what I'm doing? I know you see a car. Are you gonna let me finish? Or are you gonna get into things? I think she's gonna get into things, but we're gonna keep going. And if I have to stop, I'll stop. Um, so, Ingrid sweater. Um, that was not the yarn I originally bought to make the sweater. So the yarn I originally bought is from Knit Picks. It is Simply Alpaca. And this yarn is gorgeous. I, I'm obsessed with it. I'm obsessed with the color. It's so soft. It's 100% alpaca and it's like chemical free. Um, let's see if it tells me on the back. It's Oecotech certified and it's also standard 100 which I believe means that it's free of a hundred different harmful chemical substances um, so um, this yarns awesome um, a couple of things first it says that it's air and weight that is a lie <laughs> I don't know what weight it is it's probably like DK. Maybe a heavy sport. Um, but it is not, <laughs> I repeat, it is not Aaron. And I knew that, but I thought it would still work. Um, I knit a swatch and I like, it was stretchy enough when I blocked it that I could block it to four by four, um, inches, but it was such a like loose fabric and it was so holy. And I was just like, that's not, that does not look like I want what I want. Um, and for some reason I was under the impression, I was under the impression that alpaca would grow a lot. And I thought that meant it would like get plumper. And so I would be able to stretch it and it wouldn't be a see-through. Um, that was not the case with at least this one. I have no idea if that's the case. Oh God, I'm going to put this down because I can already taste the alpaca in my mouth. Um, that was another issue I had is like, I felt like I had eaten a fur ball. Hi there. Um, she's right out of frame, but she's at my little feet right now. 
Um, but I now have a sweaters. I also, I did some research, um, and turns out that alpaca is not recommended for projects with like non-stockinette or slightly complex patterns. Um, which as you could see from the angered sweater, that is all that is, is complex patterns. So I was like, okay, this isn't going to work, but I want something very similar to it. So I looked online, I looked at my local yarn stores, and then I saw the Barocco. And I then, I went to Ravelry, looked on the page to see if anyone had used this yarn, and they had. And I was like, awesome, that means it works. And I saw finished fabric photos and I was like, okay, cool. That looks good, I'm gonna go get this. It was a very, hi, it was a very similar color. Um, I'm so sorry if this is distracting. Hello, I just love her. Um, very similar color. Wait, here, I'll show you the two next to each other. So they really could be paired together and look like fantastic for like a bulky, I think it would be bulky because this one is worsted. This one's fake Aaron. <laughs> um, almost exactly the same color. Um, but I will find a use for the nitpicks. Um, and then the last two acquisitions I have, I'm so excited about because, so they just arrived the other day, but I actually, she's gonna start talking. Yes. What? What is it? Can I keep talking? Okay. Um, so they just arrived the other day, but I actually, um, I actually ordered them. Hi. I ordered them back in like May, late May, early mm -hmm. June. And it was the first time I had ordered directly from an indie dyer. And it was the first pre-order I ever did. So I'm so excited that it's finally here and I can't wait to make things with it. So the first one I'll show you. So they're both from Mezzo Makes, who is an awesome dyer. <laughs> I'm obsessed with everything she does, but I got two colors from her office collection. So I didn't get any the first time she had the office pre-order and then I was kicking myself for weeks afterwards, especially when people started getting their yarn. I was seeing it and I was like, oh, I should have, I should have. Um, and then when she released her Taco Bell collection, which a Taco Bell collection, that's incredible on its own. She also released a second pre-order for her office colorways. And while I loved the Taco Bell collection, they weren't really like my colors. I'm like, I love to look at them. They would be beautiful, but not something I would wear. Um, but, but she redid the office ones too. So I was like, you know what? I, I like, I thought about it for so long and I was like, yeah, I'm doing it. Um, so the first, they're both on the Soprano sock base. And these are them. They're beautiful little baby. I cannot wait to use them. Um, this one is Casino Night. It is this like beautiful like blue, dark, dark purple, almost black with a little bit of light gray. And there's even some like, looks like tiny bits of gold. Um, really beautiful like tonal variegation. Um, Am I using that right? I don't really know. I'm just going with it. But I am planning on using this to make another Pure Mesh Pullover by James and Watts. This color, the, what I ordered this for originally was to make the Pure Mesh Pullover. Um, and so when I bought this yarn to make it, I was like, you know what? I'm just making two. I'm just gonna decide now that I will love this pattern and I will make two. Even if I hate it, I will make two because I want them both. Um, so that's what this is gonna be. That's what this yarn's gonna become. I think it's gonna be gorgeous. Um, very excited. And then this green. <laughs> I have dreams about this green. This is the teapot, which is like, one of my favorite parts of the office. Um, anyway, but this color, holy moly, I love it so much. Um, 
it just has the most beautiful green tones to it. Um, it wasn't until I started knitting that I realized how much I love green and how much how drawn I am to green yarn. Um, it is kind of a problem because I feel like my wardrobe is becoming all green. I'm not mad about it, but what if I just I don't like green? I don't think that's gonna happen, but um, so this one, I'm not exactly sure what I'm gonna make with it. I have a couple of ideas. One is to make a ripple bralette by Jessie Mae. Um, because I made one um, using less traveled yarn. That was the first like indie dyed yarn I ever bought and I bought it from my local yarn store. Um, and I made a ripple bralette, but turns out it didn't fit me. So I gave it to my mom. Um, so I was like, I would love a ripple bralette in this color. And then recently I've been seeing the, I believe it's the Anytime Tank, I think. Uh, I will double check. The Anytime Tank by Camel Knits, um, which like is more like of a more of a recipe, I think, than a pattern. It doesn't give you like stitch counts and stuff because you can do it at any gauge um, with any yarn weight. So it's like super customizable. I don't actually own the pattern yet, so I can't say for sure what it's like but I believe it has like a spreadsheet where you plug in numbers or it gives you a formula or something um and um I think that's really cute if I want a non-ribbed situation um so I have not decided but I'm so excited to use this yarn um yeah so that is that's everything that I have. Um, so, um, thank you so much for watching this video. If you made it this far, um, thank you. I appreciate it so much. Um, I, yeah, this has been super fun. I, I think podcast wise I'm going to try to do like a once per month recap at the end of the month so this was all my July so I'll probably do one at the end of August um and hopefully in between that I'll be uploading some other fun videos so if you want to subscribe you can do that below please don't feel like you have to um but it would be awesome if you want to stick around um you can also like or comment but again don't don't feel obligated. Um, yeah, so thank you again for sticking around. I think I've said that like four times. Um, but uh, I hope you are well and I hope you have a great rest of your day and get to do some really nice knitting.